and welcome back to Open Studio. I'm Steve Leahy. So we uh, got this kind of blocked in, just about to move on to the lighter areas on the headlights and that kind of thing. So I mixed up a little bit lighter gray, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> Make sure I spray this out first so I get all that good color. All right, so this time I'm gonna start on the headlights. <clears throat> I want to see how bright this is, see if I have to lighten this up a little bit. There it is. No, this is good. This will work out well. So I'm going to start in the middle of the headlight and just like flare it out. So that's where the highlight is right there. So I'm not painting the whole thing in. I'm just kind of adding that bright flare. So what I do is I add the flare in. And then I gradually move the airbrush back to kind of add a little bit of overspray for the whole area just to lighten that up a little bit. Okay, so in the last episode I had mentioned that this wasn't as light as it needed to be for down here but that was okay the reason why is this this side of the chrome trim is a little bit brighter than this side so I'm gonna use this color to do that which will be fun I should have really done mixed up these separately um, so that happens right where the SS is just like that um, because now I have to either save this color which I probably will or remix it and I'm thinking to try to save it okay so Oop, let me get that down here so we don't get any. Here we go. So now I'm just going to hit this edge right where I have the paper. Just lightly and then fade it out a little bit. And then when I pull that, it just gives me that hint of that brightness there. So that worked out really, really well. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I don't forget the, all the lines. So for the lines, I'm just going to hit them straight down and then just move across. I want to be careful as I get to the light. I don't want a bunch of overspray on that after I just finished it. So even though it's a tiny, tiny cut, just like the stripe, even though it's a tiny cut and it seems like the paint can't get through it, it does. But I also have to work in light layers because <clears throat> if I really push it hard, it'll it'll spider web underneath as well. So I don't want that. So just multiple passes. And let it build up. Come on. There we go. Oh, sure, now it's working. So what was going on, there must have been something like clogging the end here inside because I was getting almost no flow and then all of a sudden whatever that was moved out and now it's spraying. So it happens all the time, especially with the heavier colors. So it's just, you know, it's just working through it. Okay, for, don't can't forget those. Um, I should have cut those, but that's okay. You can get those on the next pass. Now, same thing as the pin strap. I want to try to look at this before I pull it off. Because if I need to add more, I, I, I will never get that lined up again. So I just want to keep that on there. But that came out great. That's perfect. Awesome. Love it when it works. All right, good this aside so now I'm gonna grab the rest of the bits and pieces for this um, I'll use a new coffee for this so what do I need to do the SS I need to kind of get that I need to kind of get some of that in there again you just I'm gonna indicate it so I'll put a little you'll see I'll put a little cut marks in certain areas just to kind of tell me where things are that's all set 
Oh, you can just barely see the, so you can see the horizontals because they're chrome. But I just noticed in the photocopy, you can just barely see some of the uh, verticals. So that's going to be fun. All right. Again, tiny little detail, but that's going to make it. That's going to really add a lot to it. Um, headlights need a lot of work, but that's all paintbrush stuff. So that's good. This piece of chrome trim. All right, so what I'm going to grab is I'm going to grab the SS, this little piece of chrome right here on the front of the fender. Oh, and of course, the uh, chrome trim on the edge of the hood. i got to get that too. That looks good. Okay, let's do it. So close, but just check out the if you check out the headlights now, you see they're already starting to have that that you know kind of concave feel. Uh, so that little highlight really adds a lot to it. And the you know the the, the darker ones are going to kind of finish the job, little details on it. So um, they're getting done in pieces, but I'll try to keep you up on everything with that. <clears throat> okay, what I do with my cutting mat? No. <laughs> Ah, I'm losing stuff, like my brain. All right, there we go. Uh, is that straight? Yeah, it's pretty straight. Okay, I'll use a ruler for that. Yeah, I mean, I love making long straight cuts without a ruler. It's kind of a, you know, point of pride for me, but um, if I can use a ruler, I'll use a ruler. Because... Again, you know, it, you don't have to be an artist to see that a line isn't straight. And that's kind of what I go on all the time. Like, I think about what people are going to see, you know, and how, the, how that's going to register in their heads as they look at these things. And, um, and that's a big one. Like I said, I mean, it's, it's like doing portraits, you know. I mean, you don't have to be an artist to see that that doesn't look like Uncle Joe. You know what I mean? And that's, that's really the rub. And especially with these cars, too. You don't have to be an artist. If you own this car, you're passionate about this car, and you know everything about this car. You know what I mean? So if I put something in the wrong spot, I expect to be called out. I was kind of joking about it in the last episode that people, like, freak out about the small stuff. But essentially, that's what I'm doing with this painting. I'm freaking out about the small stuff. Okay, so that's that piece of chrome. Oops, there was a hinge right there. What's nice about this too is um, these little tiny highlights that I got to put on the hood right here. So I just by the little hitch in the chrome right there, I've kind of told myself where that's going to be, which is nice. All right, so the same thing with the chrome trim over here. The tendency is to listen to my brain and go right across all the way to the end. But if you notice, the light part of the highlight ends right here. So that's what I'm going to do too. And again, it's that resisting what you think you see versus what you actually see. All right, so that goes there. This one, however, just tapers down to it. Do I want to do that, though? So, <laughs> all right, I just said, you know, paint what you see and not what you think. Uh, I say that, but there is some decision-making in there, too. Sometimes what you see doesn't really tell the story the way you want it to, so you got to kind of make your decisions as you go. Um, so I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with what I see and not, not what I'm thinking. So that little taper, I thought, would make it look like that, that piece of chrome trim isn't straight, but I think it's going to work out. It's going to work out fine. <clears throat> okay, what else did I say? The SS... Um, yeah, I'm not going to do these inner, again, these inner lines here. All right, so the SS. Um, what I'm going to do here <clears throat> is I'm going to cut out the block of numbers underneath here. So I want to know where that is. And again, this is not cutting out the letters. This is cutting out a guide so that I know where to put the letters and numbers. There we go. So that's the block of numbers. Now for the SS, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through the center of the letter as much as I can. 
Now these letters are really tight to one another, so if I get too close with these cuts, then I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna fall out or it's just not gonna work. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'll, I'm gonna flip this over and draw what I'm doing. <clears throat> so you can see it, it's a little bit easier if I do that. Okay, you can see it, but I'll draw it bigger. So what I just did is here is your S, for instance. So what I did with the knife is I cut here as much as I could, and then I cut here as much as I could, and then I cut here. So now when I'm when I'm go to spray that, if you look really close, you can see it. Now I'll know where those letters are supposed to go. It's upside down, but or backwards, but you get the idea. Okay. What else did I need? Anything else? This is a light gray, so that's good. I've got all that. That's good too. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. I'm trying I'm trying really hard to gauge like actually how many more episodes there are gonna be by the progress, but it's hard to tell even at this stage. I'm not sure. Like I like I was just thinking, oh can I after this one, can I get it done in one more episode? But I don't know. <laughs> don't know like I don't know how long those headlights are gonna take I think it's one of those things that it could go really fast it could also depend on what's going on with it so I don't know just gonna have to come back and find out okay obviously this needs to be really lined up well Ah, oh, that's black down there. That's interesting. Okay, that is. That's where it's supposed to be. All right, a little bit of adjusting. That's no problem. Same deal as the other one. So I've got the magnets holding the top side. I'm going to hold the bottom side, and we're just going to go for it. Um, I want to grab a, a reference too, though. I, no, there isn't. I was going to say I don't think there's a, a lightning of that like there is on the one below. It. I do want to check the reference, so especially over here, I don't know how light that is. <clears throat> I just cut out my reference photo, which I do all the time. Just grab it in there. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm glad I held up. It is. It's darker down here than it is on the top part of it, so that's good. So I'll just hit this a little bit more to kind of catch it up. Now I can concentrate on the top. Piece. Lovely. All right, so the SS and the number, same thing. I just hit that straight, straight on, kind of drive the paint through it, and I think that's all I cut, right? That should be good. Same thing here. I want to look at this first before I pull it off, just in case. That's perfect. That gives me just what I need. And that really lined up well too. So that was a, that was a good shot. All right, good. <clears throat> 13 minutes, so we have 17 more. I will have hopefully the whole grill done by the end of this episode, which will be exciting. All right, so now just more of the same. <clears throat> just all, all the detail work. So I'll start with the dark, the black, um, again, um, I, don't, I think there's an argument for starting with both. You, you could do either, but I prefer to start with the black since white to me in my head, those brightest highlights indicate that part is done. But I, a lot of that is just, you know, force of habit, I guess. You know, I've just always done it that way. First thing I'm gonna do is there's, this is a, this is dark here. So I'm gonna close that off the way it should be. Uh, for the paintbrush stuff, I know I've mentioned it. Um, this is still the same opaque white and opaque opaque black, and I just use the regular 4011 reducer, uh, and that's it. So it uh, brushes really, really well. It brushes like um, like a liquid acrylic, like just what you'd expect, which is nice. All right, so now I can add the rest of those details that were missing on that. 
There was also, I missed it, but there's a cool gray line, which I will we'll put in right now because I don't want to forget it. I think it's, again, I think it's a reflection of the chrome in the top part of that bumper. So I think this, this line that I'm about to paint is the reflection of these grill lines above. Again, it's not, you don't really need to know exactly what it is, uh, but I like to do that. It's fun. You know, try to figure out what, what I'm looking at. And what's nice is this doesn't have to be super straight. It's kind of wobbly in the reference, so it's like the chrome has a has a surface to it, you know? So, I mean, I don't want to, you know, blob it on, but it doesn't have to be like ruler straight. Here we go. It. Those grill lines do need to be straight, so we'll we'll do that in a second. <clears throat> Actually, uh, we'll do that now. Yeah, I'll get those done. Okay, so those are pretty much white. Well, maybe a touch of black in it. Then there would be highlight white. So I'll mix it with really, really light gray. It's gonna look white when I paint it on here, but it's really like a light gray. All right, so the paintbrush trick. Um, I think I've shown this before. I don't know if I should get it on this painting. <clears throat> to get a nice straight line. So I'll take the ruler. This one has a rubber mat on the back. It's an inking ruler, which is nice. It's actually a cutting rail. It's designed for cutting, but I use it for this too. Uh, and then, so this is flat on the, on, the, on the panel. You want to obviously make sure the back side is dry, you know, clean. Um, put it on the panel and then raise it up. Just tilt it back. So... And then what I can do is I can line the paintbrush line up with the line on the board and actually use the ruler as a ruler. So this is an old mall stick trick for uh, painters. A mall stick is just that. It's a big stick with a velour or felt end on it so you would put that end on the you know on, off the somewhere and you would do the same thing you would run along the stick with your paintbrush to make a straight line <clears throat> very very cool kind of trick to get down because obviously it's you, know, you can't use a regular a ruler in a regular way with a paintbrush but this will do it i always i always run a practice run first too to make sure i'm in the right spot So that is that. What do we got? Those. Well, let me do this other one first. I was gonna just run right up that, but I'm gonna because the in, the the upper ones are a little bit thinner. So just keep my mind where it should be. So you can see why that. Leaving that middle cut out didn't matter because I was going to paint it anyway. <clears throat> okay. That's good. Ah, oh, that's going to be cleaned up. All right. I don't... What do we got? 12 minutes? Um, yeah, I don't... The girl will not be done in this episode. <laughs> Unfortunately. Again, this is what I mean about trying to gauge on how much time is left. Um, sometimes things go fast. Sometimes you run into it and things are a little bit slower. Um, so obviously getting these right is slowing this down a little bit, but it's all part of it. Oh, my hand slipped there, so that's a clean up. It's all right though. That one came up good. All right, so these other lines, they're really tight. They're really up against it, so hoping I had enough paint in there and I didn't took a chance you guys just barely said it over the ruler but when I pull it you'll see it there we go so there's your second line and now we'll get the other one in Okay. 
So there's my second one. Okay, good. Do the other side. So see how this bottom one is a little bit thick, thicker and there's that little hitch in it? I'm gonna clean all that up in a second, but I'm just gonna get the lines in first since I have this gray on the palette. Um, this um, wet palette has been amazing. So I normally I'd be like banging on this thing to get these lines in before that paint dries on the palette. Now I don't worry about that as much, but still, I wanna get this, um, get these lines in since I have all this color mixed up and it's fresh. So I'm gonna kind of lock these in first and then I'll clean them up. Let's dry it out on me. Almost there. Okay, good. That is good. All right, good. So for cleanup, um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of cleanup that has to happen here on this. There's overspray right there. It's foggy in this black area, so that's got to be cleaned up. So this is good. I get to kind of do everything at once. Um, I throw in the letters. I could do that. Then I don't have to worry about that. Same thing. Same color for the letters. So you can see what the, the cutout gave me. I can see the S's there. I just have to fill in the gaps now. And this is really, like, you can see these letters really well. So that's not always the case, though. Like, for instance, the the uh, the letters in the back. So now what's neat is your eye looks at that and says, oh, that's, that's, that's Chevelle, SS, or I think that's what it says. It doesn't matter what it says. The beauty is, is you kind of automatically assume you, you see those letters, even though it's just a little blob of paint. However, these ones up here are different. You can actually make them out. So the hard thing there is it kind of goes with what I was talking about with the um, chrome trim and painting just what you see. Letters are especially true with that for me. Uh, the one thing that like drives me nuts, not really drives me nuts, but when I look at um, someone's painting, where they have a, um, I don't know, whatever, a truck or a building or something with actual letters on it, the tendency is to paint all those letters. Like, you know what that word says, so you write out the, the letters on, on whatever you're painting, and it's not really what you see. It's not really what's in the, it's in the, you know, in the reference that you have. So it always looks like the letters are just, like, kind of glued on. It's... So the, the, the hard part for me is to kind of turn that off. Like I know what it says, but I can't, I gotta just paint what I see. I, if some of the letters are blurred out or you know they're fuzzy and they blend together, whatever it is, I, I try to like ignore the letters and just look at them as just more shades. So that's, um, with these, with the SS though, you can clearly make it out. So those are gonna be painted in as they are, but the numbers below, you know, the, I mean, it's what, 398, but I'm not going to do that, you know, I'm not going to actually t paint in 398, right now it's just a block, so I've got black in here, so I know there are three numbers there, so I'm going to make the divisions for the three numbers, I'm going to straighten it out so that it doesn't look like it's all wonky, and then I know it's 398, but I'm just going to indicate some of the things that will make that look like what it's supposed to look like, and that's it. Even though mine looks like 701. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so this car has a giant motor in it now. You just can't tell. All right. Oh, boy. All right. Let me, um, I, I, I'll probably revisit that. There's actually a bunch of highlights on the SS2 that I'll add and grays and stuff, but that's not the job right now. The job is to kind of do the cleanup first and then I'll get into that heavy duty detail. And that's what I mean. This is why I can tell this is not going to be done in this episode. Okay, so for the uh, cleanup on this, I'm just going to use the paintbrush. So I'm just going to, because this is, it's, it's black here. I mean, I know I got to put in the vertical grill pieces in the end, but other than that, it's black. So so I'm just gonna run this in and clean it all up really quick. I mean, I could 
cut out a template and airbrush, but then I run the risk of just getting black overspray on the other stuff and having to fix that. So using the paintbrush works really well here. So I just kind of start in the middle and then push the paintbrush down so it opens up the bristles and then I just watch where those the edge of those bristles are, the edge of the brush, and that's what I'm using to paint that straight line. Once I get it spread out to a certain point, I hold that pressure on the brush. Like It's really important that I don't push down any harder because it'll spread the bristles out more. Um, or let off, because if I let off, the bristles contract and then you, know, you get a wobble going in. So once you get that edge, I well, just kind of buggered that up, but once you get the edge, you just kind of keep it consistent. And then for the ends, I just you know kind of manually go in and clean it up, like right near the headlight rings and stuff. I don't know that I... There's a little catch there, but I don't know that I've got close enough to the edge, so I think I can get a little bit closer there and not have to repaint the gray above. So we'll get a little bit closer and cut that off. Nice. That's going to work. That is going to work. All right. Yeah, this is going to be clean up. All right. So the same thing happens with these lines, but just in a slightly, like this outside one. I'm glad this, this problem happened with the outside one because it's easy to work in this big, to, to say big area below the, the grill pieces, you know, these chrome pieces. Um, if it was, if I had to clean up in between these two, that would be fun, but I don't have to, so... Let me um, shut up so I can do this line without wobbling it. Nice. Okay. Oh, I just did that. <laughs> okay. Um, no problem. So this, I, I, I still have that gray mixed up. So I'm going to use that on the ends of these little bits of chrome. They kind of fade in, so I'm going to pull them out closer to the letters, and then I'll airbrush over them at the end. But still, I need to get a little bit closer to those letters to get that to happen. And with this gray, I can also clean up that little hitch that I did. And like I said, this is where, this is where the money really is. You know, it's taking the time with this stuff that I really feel makes the painting. I'm just going to run them right into this headlight ring because the headlight ring will cover them. I just want them to be consistent all the way out to the end. There we go. <clears throat> and that little blob now is dry, so I can fix that. And what's one of the huge reasons I love water-based paint for this exact reason. So I, I blobbed that black onto this line. I had to fix it. I waited, what was that? A minute a minute and a half working on other stuff and I could just come back and go over that um, I have a lot of respect for people that paint with solvent based paints you know paints that reactivate um, when you paint over them so it's not only solvent based paints watercolors work the same way so if you go over that unless it's a really dry brush you're gonna reactivate that paint and in that instance I would pull this white and it would make that you know it would turn that gray because it would mix with the black instead of cover it. But this acrylic base paint, this Createx, the Wicked Colors, once it dries, it's on there. It's, it's, it's a solid film. So I've gotten really comfortable with kind of going over it later to, to kind of fix things or, or rework things. <clears throat> Just a really neat way to do it. All right. How are we doing? We have just under a minute, so I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup here. And um, we will break and we'll come back and finish this up not finish it up. I wish we had one more episode. I'm guessing now that it's going to be two to three more from where we're at. But again, the headlights might surprise me. Headlights can take a while for the same reason that this is. But um, but yeah, that's, that's coming along. <clears throat> there we go. All right. 
So thank you for joining me for this episode. I am Steve Leahy, and this is the Chevelle painting. Let's zip you guys out a little bit so you can see where we're at. Um, so yeah, so thank you for coming by again. Um, if you are enjoying this, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you feel the need to share it with someone else who might get something out of it, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, so we'll finish cleaning up the grill on the next one. Um, keep working, and I think we're going to end with the headlights. That's looking like the way it's going to go, but it is really coming together now. So thanks very much, you guys, and I will catch you guys on the next one.